that morning guys and welcome to today's video. Sophie and I are just getting things done. Uh -huh. Sophie, is, I told you guys Sophie's taking this course and I asked you last week a question and then I forgot to tell you the answer. So the question last week was something like, what is not a regular, a, um, a normal horse behavior? You told them that? Yeah, and I forgot to tell them the answer. So the question was, what is not a normal horse behavior? And was rolling, pawing, cribbing, and then what was the last one? Oh, no. Talking, like making noises to other horses. And so Sophie picked, what did you pick? Cribbing. Cribbing, because cribbing is clearly the only answer, the only right answer. Like, it's normal for horses to paw, like when they're bored or impatient. When she chose that answer, they said it was wrong. And then we're like, what the heck? Like, everything else to me seems normal except for cribbing. Cribbing is not a good behavior to have, and I don't think it's normal. I think it happens in extreme situations like when a horse is very 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 bored or locked in a stall all the time or has some kind of issue but anyway we're wrong apparently I think that the program maybe had a mistake in it because uh, that has to be the right answer did you can you remember any answers any questions that we did today that you did today um it was like what their emotions yeah so today it was about it was like look at all these pictures and tell uh tell me what the horse means so like with the ears forward it meant that it was what like alert the ears um to the side means it's listening listening from behind or like it's how to tell aggression how to see aggression and all the different things that horses do like swinging its tail meaning that it could be angry watch out or it's like flat, uh, swatting at flies or just all that stuff you got what'd you get on that a hundred <laughs> So anyway, she's getting there. It's a 15 hour course. So today, Gabby is starting a new semester at school. She has a whole new set of course courses to do. Ellie is so excited. She thinks we're going outside in a few minutes. She's like, I know we're going out. I know it. <laughs> He's so cute. Anyway, today I wanted to try and master this thing. You guys know we're having baby goat soon. And Sam, the most wonderful man ever, bought me this. <laughs> And I have no idea how this sucker works. All I know is that it's heavy, holy moly. So I absolutely need to figure it out. It, if you guys don't know what it is, it is a milking pail and a milking machine. It's a milking machine that we can use to milk our goats. So essentially when you're milking Nigerian dwarf goats. I mean, a milking machine can make it a little bit easier for you, but at the end of the day, a milking machine isn't probably going to empty her milk completely, so you're still gonna have to do some hand milking at the end just well, to finish it off. Do that. No, we do want to do that because the only way to make more milk is to empty the milk. So, and it's the same with women too. The only way that you make milk, if the babies don't drink all the milk, then her body will be like, oh, they don't need that much milk. I don't need to make that much milk. But to increase milk supply over time, you have to empty the milk all the time. So when we do start milking, there's a whole like, there's a lot of stuff about milking a goat, like a lot of stuff. Fortunately, I was an expert breast eater <laughs> and I understand it naturally. I pretty much have everything I need now for milking the goats and I'm excited to do it. And I do want to use our milking um, machine because I think it will be faster. We will have to do a little bit of manual milking, but I'm okay with that. I think I probably even like manual milking better. I never used an electric pump when I was breastfeeding. But I absolutely need to figure this thing out because it does look complicated. I want to be ready for when it's time to milk. I'm actually really excited about this pail. I needed like a nice steel pail that I can put the milk in and when you milk a goat, you want it to be nice and cold so you freeze the pail before you start milking. You bring it down all chilly and cold so that when the milk goes in here, it stays nice and cold. So that's exciting. My milking pail, you guys. Okay, so. I think I have it all set up properly. I have no idea how I'm supposed to do it. Like, I don't know, I read the instructions, but it seems harder than it looks. Let's try and do it on one of the dogs. <laughs> this way, hold this one. You just go 
it like that. No, it has to clamp on there. Wow. Huh? So it has to clamp on. What do you mean? I don't know, it talks about clamps, but I think that these are the clamps. Also, it comes with a check valve, and it says that it has to be installed underneath the lid with the sharp side up, but these are all the instructions that I have, and it doesn't actually show me where to do that. Shoot, I missed it. So the mom and her two babies are now in the big chicken coop, and the other chickens are not letting them have water. Hey, how'd you get out? Oh, crap. No. Get in here. Get in here. <sighs> that moment I need Sophie and she's not here. Listen, <laughs> you guys have to go back to bed. It's a rule. <laughs> oh no. Anyway, what I was about to say was that one of the chickens was so sweet and was coming over and hanging out with the mom and the babies. Let's see if I can catch him. Come on. In there. In to your bed. Get in there. Oh. oh, I'm a genius. Come on. Get in there. Wow. You have to go back. You're all alone out here. You'll get eaten. Get in there. Get in there. In. Yay. Man, I rock. Everybody's good. Everybody's happy. Huh. <laughs> it's hard. Sam and I used to talk all the time about how we wanted a farm, like for years, when my boys were little, and we almost bought a farm once. And then we ended up buying another house that was on an acre, and I love that house. It's my favorite house that we ever own. But now that we're here, it feels like the only ones really interested in farming are me and Sophie. <laughs> Although Sam is a big help. I'm wondering if we waited too long. So before I forget, I wanted to tell you guys that a lot of people are asking me questions about Miss Beautiful Paris. So Just they like, found out they can go around. Oh, see, they found out they could go around? Yeah. That's what I was trying to get at yesterday, is that I tried I to... Installed for now. I tried to do it in a way that nobody would, would come around. Anyway, so everybody wants to know about Paris. I love her, I wanna buy her. Like I, I'm ready to buy that horse. Obviously after some vet checks and a farrier check cause she has four shoes. So um, anyways, it's not my call, it's Gabby's call. And Gabby has a lot going on, like a lot. She is addicted to school, she's addicted to education. She loves where her life is headed. And I know she worries about what will happen when she goes away to school and she has Storm here, because she loves Storm, you guys. And she has her own whole set of criteria, her whole own journey that she's trying to plan out for. So I have to like, we have to figure it out. It's like one of those things where I keep saying that you can't jump ahead in life. Like you have to let it play out. Like the whole reason that I needed to not buy a horse last summer for Sophie was because I don't know where Sophie's headed yet. Like her passion is with jumping and yet she loves the Western so much. Like she's exploring so many options right now. It just doesn't make, it didn't make sense back then to buy a horse. I expect that in the next few months, back jumping again, she'll know for sure what she wants in a horse. So I've been looking and trying to figure it out, but until God gives me the answers to a few important questions, like what the heck does Sophie wanna do? I can't just buy a horse. Same with Gabby, but I'm ready. I even have already like talked about it with the owner. They would give me a good deal. They also said I could lease that horse for a year so Gabby could like have you know, a, a good horse that she likes for lessons. Like I've gone through all the things to be ready. I'm just waiting on Gabby. So as soon as I know, I'm hoping she gets to ride one more time this week. And then we're gonna try and figure it out. And don't worry, I'll keep you guys posted like I always do. She walks up to me, throws her head and acts like I touched her. But I just do this and she doesn't. Okay, I'm gonna go and see if Penny remembers the flag and if she just comes running. Penny. All right, so I just hope it's not it looks like Penny got the flag last night. Sophie left it on that ledge. 
She is Here. such a sassy pony. Let's see if Penny notices. Target! Storm doesn't know any kind of positive reinforcement training at all. Gabby does not believe in it. She's like many of you guys. Penny! Target! <laughs> She's not even looking. Gracie says, I'll come. Penny, if you don't come, Gracie's gonna get trained. Penny! Target! She says no, I'm gonna take that. But you know who said yes? Gracie. Such a Gracie, good girl! So Gracie's coming in. And I'm gonna work with her. Wait. Something that I noticed, and one of you guys noticed in the last, in Sophie's riding video, is that Sophie got away from jumping. She was super nervous. Jumper, loved it, and loved the adrenaline from it, but super nervous, and she went away from it for like a year, and then just came back. And I was actually shocked by the level of maturity she achieved. And sometimes, life is just about waiting until you get to a certain level. Everybody matures at a different, age, everybody uh, reaches milestones and skills wait, I wonder if I like at different like ages. Like hey, wait a minute. I can't vlog and horse at the same time. I wonder if she's gonna lay down on the couch. All right, I'll hold Gracie, you try it. Here, I doubt wait, it. Let me, let me put down my phone. Good choice. Aww, she's such a mama's girl. <laughs> so Sophie's done this with her before. Try laying down. <laughs> cry. I'm not crying. My kids cannot pretend to cry. It's the weirdest thing. The reason I told you that story about Sophie is because Gracie is kind of like the same thing. Gracie is a pony with a pony mentality and her whole career was all based on her being crazy and not very many people being able to ride her and having to have like a, a certain kind of rider but I'm gonna stay here with her. I feel like Gracie has really started to mature like I feel like her just sitting doing casual stuff I feel like she still struggles with some things but I feel like I see a maturity in her that's different than how she was before today it was to somebody in the comments said they don't understand the benefit of training a horse to come to the flag to target to the flag and so I was explaining in the comments how good it can be how good it can be because it's so useful for so many things so think like if you want your horse to learn to weave poles when you're on the ground and you can use the flag to show them where you want them to go if they're willing to follow the flag or like if like I've done before for trailer training, if you train a horse to be comfortable with a flag and use that in a scary situation like the trailer, you put the flag in the trailer and she's comfortable with the flag and she knows what will happen when she touches the flag. Oftentimes I've seen horses go running into a trailer and just load on them on their own because they're comfortable with the flag and they see the flag in there. But there are so many ways that you can use teaching your horse to, t to target to the flag. I've seen people use it on horseback. I've seen people use it in so many different ways, but it's 
based on positive reinforcement. This horse is annoying. Like, <laughs> Gabby needs, I'm gonna tell Gabby from now on and for the rest of this winter, she has to work with her because she is so annoying. <laughs> now she's gonna touch, touch my flag. All right, come on, Gracie, you're, you're evicted. I know she just needs more work. <laughs> Trying to work with Gracie shows me how much work I've actually done with Penny over the last couple of years. Like it's actually shocking how good Penny and I understand, how well Penny and I understand each other. Like she is amazing to work with and she's polite and she enjoys working. So I think this is gonna be an update video. Another big update is that Sophie, you guys know Sophie had some health issues that we didn't even know. She had a fall off a horse straight onto her head and ended up with really bad headaches for all over a year. Uh, she ended up getting a CT scan done and we found some problems in her brain with her pituitary gland among other things. So the doctor ordered her uh, MRI and she's gonna have that in a few weeks. And But in the meantime, she's been taking medication that has really been changing her life. So in the last two months, she's lost about 15 pounds. She loses about a pound a week, which is fine. Like this is not a journey for weight loss. This is a journey to fix her health. And just naturally, um, as things even out and, and get better, she just naturally is like slimming down a little. So that has been amazing. So I just wanted to update you guys and I'll let you know that things are really working out for her and going in a positive direction. I'm excited for the MRI and see where that leads us. And I can sit still until I'm told to sit still. Yeah. Then I feel like I start moving, but I'm actually sitting still. But my brain tricks me into moving. So she, the doctor didn't give her any like a, any kind of like a sedative or anything uh, to prepare her for the MRI, but I think she'll be fine. Sam just got home. It's wet everywhere. It is turning into a disaster of wet. I think by, I think by the end of the, I already did the chickens. Oh, and you know what happened? They all escaped. I had to chase them back in all by myself. So I felt the horses and they're not too hot in their blankets, which is odd because it's kind of nice out. The crazy thing about that gorgeous horse, Paris, is one, I love the name. I love her name. I love her personality. In the past, I would have just been like, we're buying her, I love her. Like, Gabby can ride her whenever she wants, but it took a lot of time for me to figure out and listening to it took a lot of time and a lot of listening to gabby for me to figure out like so this horse is tawny and petite and the only one that's going to really be able to ride her is gabby she's definitely going to be like a gabby horse so what will life look like for us if i just bought her in like two years in a year and a half when gabby's gone away to university or to college like what will it look like? It will look like another horse sitting there with nobody to ride them. It'd be oh. like Finn and then I'd have to sell her. So she's not going to be good for my grandkids for any time soon. So that's what made me lead more towards leasing her. And I, and I know Gabby wants to get a job this year, this summer. And I know that she wants to, like, she has a lot of things that she wants to do that are going to keep her from being active in the horse world this summer. Like last summer, she just did one show. I don't know if she'll do any shows this summer. So... If leasing her means just like having her for lessons so that Gabby can learn on her and um, can enjoy her for this this year, like this coming up last year of her riding, and I think that's something that's worthwhile. So it honestly just involves so much thinking and planning and trying to figure out the future before it happens. So comment below what you guys think is the best ideal situation. <laughs> These guys don't know what to think about the smaller ones. I, I put him, like, I put him like that, still holding him, and they all just looked at him. They don't know what to do about him. But yeah, like, comment below and tell me what you guys think it, you see the ideal situation being. Like, what do you think, if you, if you think Paris is a part of Gabby's future, immediate future, Long term or short term? Tell me below how you see that looking. Put this one in there and like still held it, and this one ran up to him and pecked him. It's probably a rooster. Yeah, his hackles are up. <laughs> his hackles are up. When when the rooster in there, his hackles went up. He grabbed you. <laughs> he bit me. Don't you know that you're beautiful?